This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne at 6.44. Time for the papers. And look at the front pages. The Times leads on the advice given by the Treasury against ra uh, raising wages for fear of a 1970s-style inflationary spiral. The Guardian has local government cuts as schools, pools and libraries have all been impacted. The Sunday, uh, sorry, the Express, it's a Saturday, isn't it, covers the ongoing holiday crisis in airports, urging airline workers to work more overtime to get flights off the ground. The I has pressure on the PM to jumpstart the economy. The Daily Mail covers Prince William's rift with his estranged brother, Harry. The Telegraph has the Treasury's vow not to back down on striking rail workers. And the Mirror leads on Paul McCartney's decision to axe the Beatles hit back in the USSR from his tour to support Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, you just would, wouldn't you? Yes, it's an obvious one, isn't it? <laughs> yes. I would have not seen it. It's like when Michael Jackson ditched Dirty Diana when Diana was in the audience. Yes. Princess Diana. Yes, there you know, are things just, you don't sing. Just what you do. Uh, let's go through the papers now with a bit more, in a bit more detail with the journalist Ella Whelan and the broadcaster Pete Price. Morning to you Good two. Morning. Uh, Pete, let's talk rail travel. Yeah. And it's a wonder you're here yeah. at all. It is a wonder I'm here. Um, by the way, congratulations, because you're now married. I am, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it is a wonder I was here. Uh, to everybody on the train because I told everyone I was going to be on GB this morning. Oh, good. Everybody. Good morning, everybody I went round every carriage. <laughs> we were four hour delayed yesterday uh, because there was a problem. Uh, by the way, I don't blame any of the staff, nothing to do with the staff, uh, but there was a problem uh, by Milton Keynes with a fire and overhead Ooh. rails and the heat. Yet again. Yeah, you were stuck on the train in that heat. Yeah, no, no, but no, the, the, actually the air conditioner was working on the oh, train. Good. But uh, they're saying we must not bow to the strikes, uh, says the Treasury, because of inflation. The 40,000 rail workers uh, are going to cripple Britain, which they are going to cripple Britain. We've just been in a pandemic. We've all struggled. I hate to keep saying this all the time. We've struggled. Did they expect it just to go back to normal? And am I right in assuming, Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, the rail workers got paid all the way through it. Five and a half million, which I was one of, them didn't get a single penny. So we kept the trains going and they were empty. We've got to recuperate the money somehow. They're going to completely cripple uh, next weekend. And I, I, I'm going to say to the producers, please, can I not come down next week? I, oh. I was really wanting to come next Saturday, but... How, how can I? Yeah, it no. is really scary what they're doing. And all the people who are trying to get back into their lives and trying to earn a living. And they're also saying that the children might be able to get to their exams. It, it is a mess, but it's a wrong time. Surely we've got to get our lives back on track. We're all suffering, every single one of us. And we would all love a pay rise. And, and it really bothers me. But to all the, the, the rail unions, please remember there's other people out there, not just you. Mm. What do you uh, reckon, Ella? I mean, you know, the, <laughs> the nature of strikes is that it's not a kind of, it's not a sense of a social good or collective. It's about industrial action for an individual set of workers. And the thing, and, you know, rail strikes or any kind of strike is only useful to those workers if it is disruptive. Um, so it, it, there would be no point doing it at a time when it didn't disrupt people. Um, the, you know, the RMT isn't just arguing for a pay rise. They're arguing against what... Um, um, a kind of a programme of compulsory redundancies that are planned and also in relation to the fact that there's a pay freeze on rail workers from, you know, people who work within the stations, people who work on the trains um, at a time of inflation, which we know that people's wage packets are not meeting the needs that they have in terms of feeding their families or keeping the heat on or anything else. I think that, you know, that lots of different other industries have taken the RMT as an inspiration. You've got planned strikes in post office, bin workers, across airports. You know, there is a certain sense in which, you know, I'd flip it and say we are all in this together in terms of most people are finding that their, um, their take-home pay is not in any way adequate to meet any of the cost of living crisis challenges that we have. What do you expect workers to do? But where does all the money come from? Take it? Where does all the money I, come from? I think that's a, it's you know the interesting thing about this particular set of strikes, which I support, is that the it's not just about the uh, to contradict what I just said. It's actually not just about the in, the individual industrial action. It's also sending a message to the government that this that something has got to give, that this can't stand. Because yes, we had the handout from Rishi Sunak last month or whatever it was, um, which you know is not insignificant, but it, there is no long term 
long-term plan in terms of how to fix this. But you've had all those handouts uh, in the pandemic. Um, you know, the, 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 everybody was on uh, holidaying and worrying and getting paid but, out. But furlough was eight, was eighty percent of pay. So actually, if you look at it, if for, for like yeah, for but your where average, did that money come from? Though? Yeah, but where if, did that money come from? If put that into context, for your average, um, you know, like someone who's uh, some kind of creative to be to be really stereotypical living in london you know um enjoying the sunshine in their nice house and 80 percent part of their pay is great you can still go to the shops get your nice sourdough bread and everything but if you're say you know a hairdresser or someone whose wage isn't fantastic that 20 percent reduction in your pay over the course of the pandemic means that you're in a very difficult situation coming out of it so people forget that furlough was a 20 percent pay cut yeah that, you know so for, so for individuals people they're now facing inflation and rising energy bills and all the rest of it i mean what else do you expect people to does the government expect people to just sit at home and take well, where do you expect the, the government whichever government where do you expect them to get the money from it's it's, it's no it's, it's, there's no money trees anywhere <laughs> no and i wouldn't i wouldn't have rishi sunak's job if you paid me and i wandering some um i know it's difficult but there was there was a uh, having the government having laughed at Corbyn and others for magic money trees over so many years. They then Rishi Sunak then dug in his back garden and found one across the pandemic. Fair enough, fair play to him. He did he did the right thing in certain circumstances. But you can't then come out of that and say to people, while there is a very serious cost of living crisis, it's all gone now. The, the, the part of the problem is the government has no solution to this. And I just don't think we should be blaming workers for what is sensibly a you know a problem with the economy that's the yes not war in ukraine is an issue yes uh, the pandemic was an issue but something's got to give mm -hmm. interesting i mean there is the, it is because the right answer the, to yeah the well. problem is is worldwide isn't it it's not just us because for instance the ships are still not coming through from china they've got the backlog there you've got the uh, the ukraine war the fuel is going up and uh, don't forget in the pandemic it was a pound a litre at one stage they're going to recuperate their losses they're going to right or wrong and i mean i've got car like everybody else that needs filling up um it, but uh, it is bad it is wrong but it can't it, it's not just us it's worldwide mm. because we've been lost just to in. say and just as a point of information on the on the rail workers i mean rmt has made it clear that the the kind of profits that some of the railway companies are making across what you know in in the kind of million pounds uh, you know it, it across the pandemic and like we've seen for example with you know energy firms did very well out of the pandemic there are certain industries which yeah. have made a huge amount of money and then at the same time um are you know workers are not f finding that their wage packets aren't meeting their needs so you know it, it it's it's not just a case of um where will the government find money from in particular in relation to this particular strike it is a very specific thing relating to pay freeze and um forced redundancies yeah but then they say if the, if, if the company Companies give in, then obviously the, the, the price for that is going to go on the ticket, isn't it? We well, end up paying more for our train tickets. Possibly. The train tickets are scandalous. Expensive. Scandalous prices already. You know, the lady sitting opposite me paid three hundred and eighty pounds to go to London. You know, it's a scandalous price. I'm older, so I get a, a, a reduction, but it's still scandalous. Is there, is there any way the Chancellor could be looking at companies that have done quite well, yeah. particularly out of the yeah. pandemic, uh, and the other companies that we hear of time and again who aren't paying their fair, fair share of tax? Could not the, the Chancellor do something about that? In other words, taxing the very rich. Possibly. I mean, I know that sounds, you know, extraordinarily socialist, but perhaps this, this is the time. I think the, the, the problem is that there's two things going on here. On the one hand, there's a there's a much broader question of economic stagnation, which you know you, the GB News talks about on this channel. Lots and lots of different commentators pointing. It's a very uncontroversial fact to say that production in this company is a biz, in this country is abysmal. That there's no big long-term plan in terms of any kind of radical solution to not just the cost of living crisis, but generally boosting the British economy. So there's that problem, and then there's the individual. 
prob individual you know sector problems or industry problems like with the railways which is you're completely right ticket prices are astronomical it's it's completely um, it would be completely unfair to put up the prices but the question is who pays for who has to suffer for that is it the person who's going around and checking your tickets who you know is not a glamorous on it in a kind of glamorous way just having a hard time or is it the rail bosses and so i think that's what you know a strike always highlights that kind of inequality and that's what the rmt is mm. trying to do mm. There is any of that. Uh, no, not at all. I, I, I just think the whole thing is a mess, and I wish people would go back to work. How many jobs are there? Millions, something jobs? Well, we're going to be, oh, yeah. we're going to be talking about economy. this later on. There yeah, are, there's a, the a sensational amount of jobs we're being real. Real. People don't want to work anymore. Yeah. So many people don't want to work. And have a go at me. Have a go at me on social media. So many people do not want to work. They really don't want to work. I'll tell you who doesn't need to work, just very briefly, Pete, to, to pull in a bit of extra cash, is Kate Bush. God bless her. I know. But she's but back. So she is back. Uh, after 37 years, she's number one because the record was used, um, which is uh, the running up the hill. It's uh, used, it was used in Netflix, Netflix series program. Stranger Things. That's right. Which is great. But, you know, um, in Liverpool, we had Elton John last night. I went to see Diana Ross the other night, 78 years old. Mick Jagger's been on. We've got the Eagles on. <laughs> you, can't, you can't buy this. You can't buy this. This is talent, which is just being reborn. I think it's really wonderful. Born. Have, you, really? yeah. it's, have you downloaded it? Have you streamed it? I'm a huge Kate Bush fan. When I was about 20, I took part in this big... Um, they did, we did Wuthering Heights and everyone oh. on the Sussex <laughs> Downs and everyone dressed and there was hundreds of us dressed in red dress and we learned the, the dance and it sounds a bit weird but I was at university and I did yeah. you know. hey, but it was good fun there's a good thing for a lovely, lovely summer party isn't it come like Kate Bush yes right. she definitely had one of the best outfits she was unique was she was I don't know why <laughs> I know <I'm> kind of <laughs> that weird but it worked yeah it really did uh, work we are at time Ella, Pete thank you both thank very you much thank you very much we're back with all your top stories in just a couple of minutes.